Welcome back to the weather app in JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we will be continuing and add in calls to the openweathermap.org API to get location specific information to populate our application. To do this, you first need to sign up for their service. Uh, it's free, openweathermap.org, and for small applications, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. I believe they offer 50,000 weather requests per day. So unless you have a very, very high traffic website, uh, this should work fine for you. And if you have a very high traffic website, you can uh, pay a small fee and continue to have access. But once you're a member, you get access to an API key, which you'll need to copy into your uh, application. So I'm going to create an app ID field uh, that contains my API key. And this is from their website, openweathermap.org. Uh, like I said, it's completely free, and they provide awesome service. For our application, we're focusing on a single location, but they also let you do uh, multi-location queries and forecast for uh, various durations of time, as well as looking up history on particular locations. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there for my app ID there, and we're going to write a function called update by zip. And update by zip is going to take in a zip code and it's going to actually uh, build the URL that we need to query. So we're going to have a URL here um, and it's going to query the API at openweathermap.org. Um, and this is the URL, but we're going to use version 2.5 and we're going to ask for the weather. And we are going to ask for um, the zip code to be equal to whatever zip code was passed into this function. And we're going to say that the app ID is equal to the app ID we defined earlier. I'll go ahead and indent this so it looks pretty. And then we need to write a function that actually sends this request. Um, so I'm going to write a function called send request that takes in the URL. So if we decide to use uh, geolocation, which we will do in a later video, we can just use the same re uh, send request function and we don't have to uh, do too much copy and paste in. So now I'm going to write a function called send request and it's going to take in a URL um, and what it's going to do is it's going to create an XML HTTP request. So I needed to do that. I just type new XML HTTP request and this is built-in JavaScript functionality it lets you talk to uh, JavaScript APIs or not just JavaScript APIs but any API and you'll get back an XML object, a JSON object, get some text back um, and what we want to do is do XML.HTTP dot um, on ready state change so when this request receives some sort of response we want to do something and so this is called a callback when the website talks back to us, we want to go ahead and handle that. So we're going to say if the HTML HTTP request uh, has a ready state equal to four, and that means that the uh, it has received an object, a package back, and if the HTML uh, HTTP request status was 200, and that means it was successful, then we're going to go ahead and update our application. So we're going to get the data, which has come in as a JSON, uh, JSON data type. So we're going to go ahead and parse that in. It's just plain text, but there's built-in functionality, uh, json.parse. And all you have to do is say parse in uh, the response text. So we're going to parse in the response text from data. And then we're going to construct our weather object the same way we did in the last video. OK. So when we get this back, our weather object, we're going to set the icon. Uh, it's going to be equal to data.weather. And the weather object, uh, so data is the JSON value I got back, and it has a field called weather, which happens to be an array. And that lets us get back multiple locations. But since we're dealing with only one location, we only want to focus on the zeroth index. And so we're going to get the ID. And so that's going to give us back the number that we want uh, that's going to generate the correct icon. And then we're going to do the same thing for humidity. And again, data 
again, this uh, data structure is structured in a particular way. And if you go to the website, you can find all of the information on all of the data it has. These are the six fields that we're focused on, but it just so happens that there's a bunch of other fields that if you wanted to add, uh, for example, you could easily add a description of the weather because they give back that information for you. So our wind now is data.wind.speed. Our direction is data.wind.deg. It's coming back as a degree. Weather.location is going to be data.name. Um, and I think we actually called this weather.lock. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for now. Uh, weather.lock, yes, and then weather.temp equals data.main.temp. All right, I think that's all of it, and then we're going to call our same update function. We're going to pass, now that this weather object's constructed, we're going to pass it into that function. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Excellent. So this is what's going to happen when we get a response back, <clears throat> and now we need to actually send that out. So we're going to do XML. HTTP, we're going to open a, with a GET request, and we're going to send that URL like so. And then once we are opened up, we're going to actually call send. All right, so when we call send request, it's going to go ahead and construct the URL that was passed in, which happens to be this zip uh, API request. And it's going to send it off to openweathermap.org, and when openweathermap.org responds, it's going to call this function that we wrote, which will construct our weather object, and pass it to the update function that we already wrote, which will update our UI. So all that's left is now on our onload. Rather than calling update here, we're going to call update by zip, and we're going to pass in a zip code. Um, Let's go ahead and do um, 87110, which I believe is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And let's refresh here to see how we did. So it's loading. Uh, we got unknown. So something didn't quite go right. So let's check it out. And we got an XML is not defined on line 18. So we had a typo. And what we actually meant was XML HTTP like that and let's refresh this and now we have another error cannot set property on ready state change um, and this is actually oh I see what's going on here We needed, we had a little .http extra thing there. All right, and let's refresh this one more time. And there we go. We have the weather in Albuquerque. It says it's 272.95 degrees. So this happens to be Kelvin. Uh, the wind speed is 1.61 miles per hour. And the direction happens to be 317 degrees. Uh, so. Oh, and we have one little bug here. There's an undefined humidity. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with our humidity. So let's hop over to humidity. Data.main.humidity. So we just have a typo here. So we'll fix that up. We'll refresh. And we got 37% humidity. And you notice we got this nice little partly cloudy icon. Excellent. So. Uh, all that's left now is to fix this up. We want this display in Fahrenheit or Kelvin, uh, depending on which, uh, where you're located. And we want this to display north, east, south, west, rather than the actual degree. So we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video. Uh, so stay tuned.